What up guys, it's JZNES back again with another video. Today, wait, are we talking about Fire and Ice? No, we're not talking about Fire and Ice. This song is from that video though. Um, I played the beginning of that in the uh, Fire and Ice video right when I was, uh, just right before the intro actually. But anyway, that doesn't matter. Uh, today we're reviewing Mega Man Legends or Mega Man 64, uh, which is the original version I had here. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this is the, not the original cartridge I had back in the day, but this is the version that I had of Mega Man Legends, the less common version. Um, to start, let's, like, talk about this a little bit. So, the N64, uh, has the analog stick. Obviously, I should have fucking brought out an N64 controller. But the analog stick actually helps a lot with the, uh, the everything... Uh, you know, with the movement and all of that, but it actually makes it a little bit more tricky to do um, the game there. But with the analog stick, it, it helps a lot, and the C buttons are most of the major, uh, like, opening doors and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's a little bit better, and this is actually my original N64 controller from back in the day, and I can tell you that because it's got my memory pack in it, same one I've used for all of these years uh, and the trigger is a lot nicer rather than having to uh like on this controller hit the uh sorry i'm looking over here now because my monitor is over here because i'm gonna actually be playing a little bit of the game so i can kind of uh like remember all the mechanics and stuff that way it helps out i don't know why i haven't always just done that i did that in the animal crossing video that was like forever ago so the trigger is really nice uh instead of having to hit this up here to lock on. So that's all pretty nice. I don't remember if they actually implemented the thing from Mega Man Legends, uh, the Mega Man Legends 2 there, where you can uh, kind of move around while you're shooting. You can, you can do that in this game, but you can't actually lock on while you're shooting, which is kind of a big problem. Um, so there's that. So yeah, the, the N64 version, that's basically what they changed. Actually, it makes one of the mini quests a lot harder. Which is this, uh, this, uh, you get these jet shoes later in the game, and it makes, uh, that quest a lot harder because the D-pad is more precise for that, and using these, uh, actually the, the L1 and R1 buttons are really, really essential to doing that, uh, and I don't even remember what the fucking buttons were on here to do that, so it was really convoluted. I think it was, like, the C buttons or something, so it was just a lot harder to, uh, and you had to hold A, right, so... How do you do that? Maybe it was Z and R or something would be the buttons. I don't know. It, it just wasn't the same. Um, I actually did get that quest done on the PS1 version. Uh, this one is called Mega Man 64, by the way, because, you know, N64. Um, it actually came out in, like, 2000 or something. It's was a really late release for the N64 there. But this is the one I have the most uh, childhood connection with. This is the version I played back in the day. This was the second N64 game I got. It was actually sitting on my N64 collection over there on the very front. Uh, so you can always see it sitting there. Um, it's pretty uncommon. It's actually pretty rare. Uh, I actually have a box copy. I'll show that off here in a second. I bought this back in the day. Um, I actually have another box copy. Oh, where the fuck didn't I go and grab that? It's like all crushed and whatever. It's my original box. I don't have my original cartridge. I think I sold that or something at some point. But um, let's turn that up a little bit. I can't even hear this. Um, some Japanese song that never appears in the game, or in, in my version of the game anyway. Uh, so, yeah, so the N64 version is the one I have the most nostalgia with and all that, and, and it's a pretty good version. A lot of people saying it's a gimped port. Uh, the voice acting does take a significant hit, and it's, it's really a lot more, like, muffled and compressed and whatnot. Um, what do you expect in an N64 cartridge? The one thing that the N64 game does have over the original game uh is that it's not on the cd format so it doesn't take forever to like go into like when you're saving for instance the game like literally pauses every the animations and everything just lock up for for it to load the the menu with the, all of your saves on it with the cartridge it just goes right to it and a lot of the load times are less so that's that's nice that actually does cut down on stuff but the n64 version is uh there's a little, you know, there, there's, um, it's not that there's problems, it's just, it's, 
it's less good with the analog control, ironically enough. I mean, the analog control is nice, but for precise movement, like in that race segment, which is really, 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 really hard to begin with. It's already the hardest part of the whole game is that race segment. Why is it always the mini games in these N64 games? Like, it's always in the Zelda games, it's always the shooting gallery quest or whatever. That's, like, the hardest thing. Um, I don't remember what the hardest one in Ocarina of Time is. Oh, it's the shooting gallery thing uh, at the on the horseback. That's the hardest one. So it's always that, and in this game, it, it's the fucking precise-ass obstacle course. Because what, because what you have to do is you have to go through these cones, and you can hit these specific cones to slow down time, but you only have a set amount of time. And the final course, you have to beat it in 16 seconds, and it's really, really fucking hard to do. I just barely made it by, like, half a millisecond or whatever. Or half a second. Not a millisecond. By a number of milliseconds, I would have made it by. So, yeah, uh... That is basically the N64 version. This is the one I had as a kid. Uh, that's This is my second N64 game that I bought with my own money. I bought it for $40 in box back in the day. I remember that. Um, and then this one I bought way later on in like 2009 or something on Amazon. Uh, it's like one of my first Amazon purchases. And I got it in box. It's a really fucking nice box. There is... is nearly immaculate there's a little damage on the side here and up here but I, I put it in this nice little container uh because it's fucking just epic and this is always actually sitting right here in this case uh behind me like that there you can't really see it because it's behind this uh seam here but yeah so there's a real nice little box there i like how the all the sides are different colors too they did that with the n64 a lot very cool, um, very very nice to have that in box there. It means a lot to me because this is one of my favorite N64 games and just one of my favorite games uh, in general. One of my favorite N64 games. That's a lot to say that, but um, it's one of my favorite games in general. I, I put it on my list of top games. I'm not gonna look it up right now because that would look really awkward. Because I'm looking over here all the time. I already have to train myself to look here, which is gonna be easier once I start doing the gameplay. Yeah, Mega Man Legends. Um, so this is like a reinvention of the Mega Man series. Obviously, Mega Man was 8-bit and styling for years, and then he went 16-bit. And this was one of the first big, like, real spin-off series. This is when Mega Man went 3D, and a lot of people didn't really like Mega Man going 3D or whatever. But I think that this is, like, better than the NES games. And I know that's a little taboo and, you know, uh, blasphemous or whatever, but... I think this is better than those games. I think it's better than the X games, which I haven't played much of, but I remember Mega Man X being pretty, pretty good. But uh, this is definitely better than that. This is, like, one of my favorite Mega Man games. Um, I think the honor went to... Well, no, it had to be this. This, 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 this is my favorite Mega Man game, yeah, by far. Um, I think the other ones were, like, Mega Man Battle Network 3 and Mega Man 2. Um, this is before I got Battle Network 3, and this is why I decided to give, uh, Battle Network 3 a shot, I believe. Or, Battle Network 1. Did I get Battle Network 1 before this? I, I think, actually, no, that's not true. I think I got Battle Network 1 before this, and then I was like, oh, I like Mega Man for Mega Man Battle Network, so I'm like, I'm gonna get this Mega Man Legends thing. So I used to play this game all the time as a kid. I was actually one of the first, uh, N64. Wait, no, you know what? This was the first N64, this is my first N64 game right here, it was Mega Man Legends. I got Ocarina of Time second, now that I'm thinking about it, so, yeah. Mega Man Legends was my first N64 game, which is crazy, because I bought the system. Um, actually, I think the game was only $20, um, maybe $10. Shit, I, I wish I really would have grabbed that box now. The game was a lot less, the system was $40, that's what it was. I bought it in EB Games, and like, uh... 2002 or something, 2001, something in 2001, right, because, uh, well, no, this is post Game Boy Advance, when I get my Game Boy Advance, so, maybe 2002 or so, um, 2001 or 2002, I got, uh, this, and, uh, I remember playing it on my mom's big old CRT TV, which I actually have upstairs now, um, so that's pretty cool. Um, I used to play this game all the fucking time, and, and, uh, it's a really great game to have had on the N64 there, because, 
Um, there's a lot of fun discovering secrets and stuff. I actually remember the first time I beat this game, um, I used to go to this daycare, like, during the summer or whatever, and I remember sitting there grinding out, uh, Zenny in the same place I just grinded out Zenny today in the final dungeon there, um, and then, then going to the final boss and beating him. I, I'm, I'm surprised I did that back in the day. That's a pretty tough final boss, um, I guess I'll just talk about that quick. So, spoilers for Mega Man Legends. It's, it's not much to spoil, but there's a little bit to spoil. So, um, the final boss, uh, is Mega Man Juno, which, so Mega Man is Mega Man Trigger, but he's known as Mega Man Volnut in this game as part of, uh, that's, that's, so his roll casket and roll, uh, or, um, the grandpa casket. Or the two companions you have during the game. For some reason, he's Mega Man Volnut. I don't, know, I don't know what that's all about. But uh, he loses his memory at some point. I, I don't see. This is all like covered. I think in the second game, or maybe not, because it's been a long time since I played the second game. I mean, the second game's good, but like this one is definitely a classic uh, compared to the second game. The second game's good. It makes improvements, but there's, it's not. It doesn't have the same feel. It doesn't have the same charm as this game. You know. Um, the original game, other than just being super nostalgic, is just a really charming and dense, and, and every every bit of it is, is filled. And, and you don't really go a lot of, like, different places. It's all in this one island. You know, the second game is more about exploring the different islands. This is all one island, and they, they can make that island really dense and concrete and lots of different things to explore. And that's what I kind of like. I don't like when you have to, like, branch off and go different places. Because then you never have time to really, uh, connect and bond with that area. You know, this whole island, you get to connect and bond with not only the island, the layout, the people. Uh, you unlock new places in the island and, and new side quests as you go along. And, and things progress. It feels real, you know? Like, it, it's like it's like Majora's Mask, in a sense, uh, where, um, people kind of have their stories, and, and, and they're, not, they're not as complex as Majora's Mask, but they're nice. They're nice little, you know, side things. The people are, are cool, and, and, and you really form a connection with them um, over doing side quests and you know, all the different characters and stuff. And there's a lot, a lot of little nice little extra stories and stuff. I'm, I'll, I'll get into that in a bit here, but um, I wanted to start with talking about what I was talking about before, which is, oh, the final boss. So Mega Man... Juno. So you, you get to the final dungeon, and you kind of find this guy, Mega Man Juno, or whatever. And uh, this is like a whole thing out of left field, and he's he's gonna like destroy everyone on the island that you like built up all these connections with, or whatever. And then, so you gotta stop him. Um, and, uh, yeah. So basically, the final boss is like one of the hardest the whole, the hardest boss of the whole game, rightfully so. Uh, but he's just like super aggressive, and, and you you just you just really have to be good to avoid all of his stuff and his attacks and whatever. But there's this uh there's this weapon if you do all the side quests and whatever, kind of like the fierce deities mask if you want to think of it like that. You do all the side quests, and if you grind to make the weapon, at least the attack. If you grind to make the attack like maxed out, which takes like four hundred thousand zenny or some crazy thing like that that I grinded out this is insane because. One of the upgrades is like five or fifty thousand. One of them is like a hundred thousand, and then the one after that is two hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, it's insane. And then if you want to get the energy up, you know, which you really don't need, because you can still take down the boss in like, I don't know. I think the guy online said it was like seven seconds or something. So maxing the energy out is just another thousands and thousands of zenny. It's really not worth it. Um, so yeah, but you 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 can just make the fight a, a joke, which is. Kind of what I did, just because I wanted to beat the game again. Because I, I know I had trouble with this fight last time when me and Mayab played this. Yeah, last time I played this was a few years ago. Me and Mayab uh, played it together, so that was fun. Um, but that's kind of why I'm playing it now, too, is because we want to play the sequel and Misadventures of Tron Bon, which uh, I have on the PSN there. I don't have a physical copy of that. It's a really, really rare game. So, um, yeah, we wanted to play the sequel there, so I want to... Um, get to that at some point. So yeah, anyway, uh, basically, you, um, basically, yeah, so you, you fight this final boss, 
And then there's a really nice ending. It's, it's uh, yeah, like a Majora's Mask sort of ending where you see all of the characters. You even have time to walk around, sort of like a Dragon Quest ending, and go talk to all the characters and stuff. And, and it's really nice because they're... All the side quests that you've done, there's like a side quest with these uh, kids and you help them build this clubhouse or whatever. You get a bunch of cool stuff from that. There's like this museum side quest um, where you go around and uh, di while you're digging... Oh god, see I have to explain all this to even explain that. So, in this game there's dungeons, essentially. This is, it's a lot like a Zelda game, um, in a sense that there's like a lot of little extra stuff to do and stuff to find. And you get weapons and equipment and stuff, but... Um, less so than Zelda, the, the, your weapons don't really do anything in terms of the dungeon. It's more Metroidvania-esque, where, uh, you get a lot of weapons and stuff, but they don't necessarily affect how you traverse the world. The only thing that does that are, like, upgrades and stuff, like you have, um, certain upgrades. You have, uh, special items, so you can get, like, this canteen that restores your health, which is pretty cool. You get a helmet, you know, so you look like classic Mega Man. He doesn't have his helmet at first, you know. You can see it here. He's got his helmet here, but um, you see he doesn't have his helmet. It's, it's kind of strange. You get these jet skates, like I was talking about earlier, that, like, let you zoom around and stuff. You get um, spring shoes, which basically let you have a high jump, which uh, lets you traverse to new areas in the the world and uh, and, and inside the dungeons there. Uh, and you get a, you, a jacket that lets you... Or uh, a Kevlar jacket that says... That lets you um, have it take less damage, but you have to really like uh, get a bunch of money to buy those from the shop there. Um, and then the rest are like key items that I'm looking. I'm looking at special items here. So um, there's also this thing uh, in this game where there's these different, uh, almost like RPG elements, um, and almost kind of like the ca uh, custom Navi system from Mega Man Battle Network 3 there, uh, where you get all these parts. That you can equip to yourself and they'll up you have uh four different stats attack energy range and rapid so your attack obviously increases the damage that you do energy increases how many like of the little balls that you can shoot energy balls that you can shoot um range obviously increases your range and rapid increases how fast you can shoot them uh rapid's not very important um, I find that, like, no matter how much rapid you have, it's like, it really doesn't matter that much. It, it's still pretty good regardless. So range and energy and attack are the main three. Uh, and by the end of the game, there's things that'll just, like, max those out. Just like it says, like, you know, max out attack, max out energy. But you're always, throughout the game, trying to uh, balance um, your parts. Because you have two of them that you can use at first, but then you get this thing called the adapter plug by discovering stuff, um, which I'll talk about here in a second. It gives you a third part, so then you can add even more to that. Um, and, you know, parts will add, like, attack or range or something, but some, some will add attack and range. And some will have, like, a lot of range, but some attack. Like, you know, it, it's just, it's a balancing act of, of doing that, which is just really cool. So it'll all upgrade your, your main buster there, which is really a concept that they haven't revisited in the Mega Man games. Uh... Because there's never really been another Mega Man game like this, other than Mega Man Legends uh, 2 there. And I don't even remember if they used this in Mega Man Legends 2. Um, it's been a long time since I've played that. Probably like 7, 8 years or something. I only ever played it the one time too. I've played this game like constantly. Probably I probably beat this game like at least 10 times now. Um, I used to play it yearly. Um, I don't really do that anymore. I want to keep it kind of special now. But then... Uh, Later on, you get um, special weapons, which um, you can upgrade. So there's even more upgrades you can do um, by putting money into them. You can upgrade their attack, energy, range, rapid. That's all the same stuff as your, your regular buster would do, but for these weapons. And, uh, and then there's a special thing for each of them, which it upgrades some other element of it, like the active buster, which is like a missile launcher. Or, uh, is it the Active Buster? No, it's not the Active Buster. It's the, uh, the... Where is it? The... Spread... No. Yeah, no, it is the Active Buster. The Active Buster looks a lot like the Spread Buster. Anyway, the Active Buster, the special, actually, uh, increases the homing ability. Because it's homing missile launcher, so it'll, um, lock onto your enemies better. Or whatnot. So... 
the Power Buster is basically the first one you get. It just shoots like a really powerful shot. That's a really good one. That's a pretty, basically one of the best ones just because it's uh, kind of well-rounded. The grenade arm kind of it just throws grenades. It's not, um, it's not great. There's another one called the Grand Grenade, which actually can break down walls inside the dungeon, as I'll talk about in a second. Like I keep saying, there's so much to get to in this game. It's just like I want to I talk about all of it. Um, there's the vacuum arm, which isn't very useful other than the fact that it can vacuum up all of, like, the stuff that enemies drop. So, what can happen with the vacuum arm is that late in the game when you're grinding and there's all this stuff everywhere, it'll disappear after a certain time. Uh, enemies drop Zenny, which is the money for the game, and, and little health cubes sometimes. Um, so you can vacuum up, if you, if you, like, increase the, the range and the, and the energy of the vacuum, thing, uh, if you, especially the range, if you increase that all the way to max, um, you can just vacuum everything up as soon as possible, it's, and it's it's so good. It's so good for those late grinding sessions. And it's it's very cheap to upgrade the vacuum arm too, because it doesn't really have anything towards attacks, but it's really cool. Um, you got the blade arm, which kind of makes you like uh, Zero or Proto Man, which is pretty awesome. And it's very reminiscent of the uh, Legends arm look. So that's pretty cool. I mean, of the uh, Battle Network arm look. This is a Legends game. Battle Network arm look. Um, so that's pretty cool. Splash Mine. That's one of the earliest ones you get. You just uh, set a mine and it'll um, explode when something runs over it. It's not great. Um, the Shining Laser, which is the thing that I was talking about earlier. Um, I'll take this, I guess. Well, here, hold on. I'll talk about that in a second. We'll get back to the Shining Laser. God, there's so much to talk about. Um, the Drill Arm. Which actually is not a very good weapon, but it gets you through those walls, like I was saying, easier than the Grand Grenade. So we'll talk about that in a second, too. Actually, the Grand Grenade gets you through different kinds of walls. The Drill Arm gets you through, like, gigantic walls that, like, gate the progression of the whole dungeon. So that's pretty cool. Um, the Spread Buster, um, which kind of, I guess is like a shotgun kind of thing. I don't really remember. I didn't use that one much. Active Buster, which is the... The, rock, the missile launcher kind of thing. And you get a shield arm, which I don't really use that much either. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so in this game, there are many of side quests, much like Majora's Mask, um, which is cool. I like that kind of stuff, and especially when it's um, attached to characters around the island. Uh, one of the big side quests, like I was talking about earlier, is the museum side quest. So... The, to, to talk about that, I'll have to talk about the dungeons. So the dungeons in this game, uh, you go into the dungeons, it's called digging. You go into the dungeons to, to go around, defeat enemies, and like look for treasure and whatnot, which is really cool. Um, there's chests in the dungeons. Um, they're, they're not really dungeons, but they're like little areas. They're like kind of like dungeons, but... Don't think Zelda dungeon. Think like a small little area... Um, that you like kind of go through and then you, there's a lot of these little mini areas everywhere but what's cool is later on when you get like the drill arm and the and the and the grand grenade you you find out that all of these areas are connected so the the island has one gigantic main dungeon which is like really cool so you find out in the late game that you've been just been tra traversing one big area through all of these different little areas which is just like insanely fucking cool so you, so you can get everywhere from everywhere it's, it's like it's like wow like holy fucking shit like it's just a big kind of awesomeness it's like it's all connected um real neat little it's like dark souls you know <laughs> it's all connected but almost better than dark souls really um because the power-ups and the weapons that you get and you have to develop these these weapons i haven't even talked about that yet you find stuff all throughout the island that can be in trash cans or just in dungeons and stuff, um, aside from finding those buster parts. Also, the theme of the bonds, who we'll talk about here in a second. God, there's so much to talk about. Um, so, the, aside from finding those buster parts in the dungeons and, like, chests and, like, in, in cracks in the wall, there's, like, cracks in the wall you have to look out for, too. There's so many places to hide shit in this game. Um, you get stuff from doing side quests and all sorts of stuff. There's so many ways you can get stuff in this game. Anyway... So, you find all this stuff, and and uh, and it's like some of it's just junk, and you don't really know what it's for. Um, 
some of it's for quests, and some of it's for... It's like Tomba, kind of, where you find... But, but more so than Tomba, even. Uh, there's, like, one quest in Tomba where you find stuff that makes a weapon. But, like, here, it's a whole different thing. It's like, you know, you find stuff all the time, and, and then, like, like, three or four different things can make this one weapon. So, like, for the drill arm, I, I, you know, you have to find that drill, but I don't know if you, like, have to find something else, too. And you don't even get that drill arm until, like, the last dungeon, I think, or something like that. Um, and it kind of breaks down the final barriers for the, for the, um, for the island. You do, what, what's cool about it is, is the, the dungeon, this overall, like, main connected dungeon thing, is that, like, um, you, you incrementally find shortcuts, you know, and then by the end of the game, it's just all connected, which is really cool. So the drill arm breaks down the very last barrier in those dungeons. Uh, like, the Grand Grenade Arm can break down these, like, smaller barriers, uh, these smaller walls or whatever. Um, so, like, it, it gets you a little a ways there, and you connect some areas. It's like, oh, cool, cool, it's connected. And then, like, once you get that, the Drill Arm, and you break down the last barriers, it's like, wow, like, you know, we've really got there. Um, and, and, um, high jumping with the, the spring thing, that opens up new shortcuts and new paths and stuff. And, and then you have to think, like, hey, where are there areas in the, in, overall, in these little areas, like, all the different sections of the dungeon that are spread throughout the, the island there, like, which ones had high places I couldn't jump to before, and you, you can certainly miss stuff if you don't, like, think about all of the areas, so it's just really cool, there's so much to explore and discover there in the, in the main dungeon there, and the, the items... The little, the treasures that you find along the way actually can help you towards progressing and making shortcuts and whatnot, which is just really cool. So, so you're like constantly thinking about this the whole time and thinking about, oh, hey, where, where can I like use this thing and this thing? And like, does this, is this going to do anything? Can I like do anything with this to like, like make shortcuts and, and find stuff and like really explore and stuff? Which is just so cool. That's like really what I love about the game is this aspect of exploration. That, that This is what the gameplay is constantly about, is just exploring stuff, whether it's the town or the, the island or the main dungeon. It's all about an exploration. I just, I love that. And it, it's very limited at first, but it quickly becomes so much more stuff you can go and explore, um, you know. And the game doesn't take that long. It's like a 10-hour game. If you like just do the main story and don't like go and do all the side quests and whatever like even the hard side quests like the the the, the skating one or whatever you, like you don't do that one you could probably make it through the game in like 10 hours and the main story is all uh, revolving around uh, this treasure and stuff I'll, we'll talk about that in a second here but um, but yeah just like Throughout that, like, within an hour, I, I guess, or something, you have just so much you can explore once the game finally gets started, kind of thing. And, uh... Uh, so yeah, I mean, let's just get into it. So, you start off in, like, this, this like, little first mini tutorial dungeon. And this is great, uh, thing where you get to the end of it there. And, um... Well, you're on a dig. You find this refractor. This refractors are, like, these big, uh, like gem diamond things that basically power the world or whatnot um it's like the energy source for the whole world oh yeah i got uh i'm looking at my time here I, I did this game in 13 hours and 23 minutes um well plus we've been sitting here you know talking for so probably about 13 hours um that i did this game to 100 percent completion there you know got all the well i didn't like max out all the weapons or anything i maxed out the important ones i found all this stuff to make all the weapons and did all the side quests and stuff. I consider that pretty much 100%. So, um, so yeah, uh, so we were talking about, yeah, so you start in this tutorial dungeon, and then you fight, like, the first boss, which is pretty cool. Um, you just kind of circle around him. He, he's, his design is actually really reminiscent of, um, Flame Man from the first Mega Man Battle Network game. His, like, helmet looks the same and stuff. It's, like, it's kind of cool. It's a little tie-in reference there, because they came out around the same time, uh, so, yeah, so, um, you find this first boss there, and then there's this great shot when you, like, he follows you outside, and it, like, pans up to the boss, and then they actually do this later again, 
um, with the Bruno boss later on, uh, where it like pans up and shows you the scale of this boss. It's actually pretty cool because a lot of the bosses in this game are like gigantic compared to you, like this small little guy, which is like crazy. And a lot of times you're like, you know, you're like on the flutter or something, so you're like, eh, okay, like you're the scale's not as big. But then when you get to that Bruno fight, you're like, holy shit, I fight like a mech guy. You know, it's like a Metal Gear kind of fight almost in a sense, which is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah. Oh shit, is this already the end of the soundtrack? This can't be- oh no, this is- okay. They used that theme again, uh, near the end, but anyway. Wait, right, this is in the mayor's office. Hey, anyway, so... Um, so yeah, you start there, then you, you fight this thing, and then it follows you out. There's this great zoom-up shot, which I used in my, uh, intro there, back in the day. Uh, so that was pretty cool. So it, like, zooms up, and then, uh, Mega Man pulls up Back to the Future 2, jumps on the flutter. They, uh, they- they- they have some kind of malfunction in the air or something, and then they're like, the careen into the island of Catalox. And the first, like, 30 minutes or so of this game is just you, um, kind of starting out on the island, and, and you, you need to, um, you're, you're just trying to get your license so you can, like, go into the city or whatever. And then you, you find the first little main dungeon there, um, the little, first little section of that, we'll say. Um, because you have to go in and save this guy who went on a dig, when his wife usually goes on the digs, um, but he went on a dig to try to get some money for a store or whatever, and then this gets you to the junk store, because you're looking for parts for your ship, because your ship kind of crashed or whatever. Um, so you're, so you're, you're at this junk store, and this actually becomes the, uh, store where you buy a bunch of, like, the buster parts and, like, the canteen, uh, power-ups, and they give you your life gauge power-ups. There's, like... 18 pegs of health I think you can get for your your life bars if you gotta buy that upgrade like 18 times and then you'll have full health so you can you can just do that from the start of the game the, the upgrades become kind of expensive but um but it's just there and it's available to you um to, to do so that's really nice and then they they eventually sell you the jacket thing later and um yeah so that's kind of your main like store you go back to all the time is the junk store there and there's this, this great little bit where uh, she's like, what's your name? You know, after you, like, save the husband or whatever in the first main dungeon there. She's like, what's your name? And you could say Mega Man, or you could say Hippopotamus. So, of course I'm going to go with Hippopotamus. Apparently it's some kind of pun from a Japanese joke or something. I, I don't know. Who cares? I, I fucking call myself Hippopotamus. Like, I'm a Hippopotamus, motherfucker. So that was always a great joke. Uh, hippopotamus. You can just call yourself hippopotamus. Anyway, so then you go into the city. Um, you start to learn that there's there's pirates and whatnot um, around, and this is where we meet the Bonds, who are some of the best villains. They're they're not necessarily incompetent because they're really actually pretty cool. They're just they get foiled by you, and so that doesn't make them bad villains. It just makes them. Like, I don't, I don't know. You're just better than them, like, like every aspect. But, but by all rights, they should be winning in these fights. They have like these giant mechs and like all of this cool technology. I don't know where they're getting all this stuff. They put all of their resources in in this game. They just go all out. They're like the main boss fights throughout the game. Is the Bond fights? Uh, there's a few like Reaver bot fights, which are um, are good too. All, all of the boss fights in this game are really good. Because there's not, like, any stupid gimmicks for the most part. It's mostly, like, just hit the weak point, and that's it. And it's mostly about the spectacle of the fight and dodging the attacks and stuff. That's how I like my boss fights. I don't want it to be, like... Got it. I, I, didn't, I wasn't going to bring it up, but I, I'm going to bring it up now. I don't want it to be, like, Remember Me, where you got to fucking, um... You know, do all this stupid bullshit, um... I, yeah, I, actually, that was going to be my cold open for this game, was I, I was going to be like, a tear in my eye, and I was going to be like, guys, it just takes a game like Mega Man Legends to show me how fucking terrible Remember Me actually is, because that's, it is true, though. I, I needed a game like this after Remember Me, I really did. Just go back and play an old classic. This is, these are the kind of games that make me really happy to play, and I could have played this, you know, any day, because this is... It's just so much fun, and the exploration, and the, and the the quests, and, and just everything about it keeps you 
engaged and engrossed and, and you can just always keep doing the storyline or you can always continue on with your side quest or just grind money. This game has the best of all of the elements of every game combined into it. You know, you can grind, you could do, uh, like I said, side quests and stuff. There's, there's always something to do, even if you don't want to do the main story. You can just explore the dungeons. That's what I do have the time, is just go explore the dungeons. And just try to find new stuff. It's like half the game, you can do that. So, there's lots of options here. There's lots of exploration and, and stuff to do. And I think that's the game's like main strength is that. So anyway, you go into this town. This is first where you meet the bonds, like the the little serve bots. They're they're also pretty iconic. The little serve bots. Oh, I didn't bring down my uh, my Tron bond figure. Here, I should do that. All right, here we go. All right. All right, here we go. So there's my my Tron bond figure. She's in orange because that's my favorite color. Um, I couldn't get the pink one. There's a whole story about that. Her head actually came. Um, not glued on there. Well, it, like, it, it's not supposed to be glued on. I glued it on. You can't really tell. It is supposed to be to the side like that. But, um, like, it came off. Like, it wasn't on there. So that was a whole fucking... There's a whole thing about, um, me trying to get this figure and trying to get the, the other one. And then, like, it was, it was a nightmare. But anyway. So, um... Okay, so the Cerbots, that's what I was actually trying to talk about. Uh, these little guys are the companions of Miss Tron here. Uh, and so, and actually the spin-off game, uh, the, the Misadventures of Tron Bond, who's this character here, uh, is actually where you get to play as her and, and, and go with one of, like, some of her mechs and stuff and, and uh, command the Cerbots and whatnot to, to like, go find treasure and stuff, so it's pretty cool. Um, really looking forward to playing that. It's just a spin-off game, but it's one I have never played out of the Mega Man Legends, uh, games. The only one I haven't played, uh, so far. So, and there was never a Mega Man Legends 3, which kind of sucks. We'll talk about that later, I guess. Um, there's a whole controversy about that, or whatever. So, yeah, so, it just, like, uh, yeah, so you meet, you meet her... For the first time. Well, the, you meet the serve bots first. There's this mission where you gotta take down these, like, three different serve bot, uh, robots. Like, one of them's fast, one of them's got a lot of armor, and one of them's, like, just a, a really good attacker or something. And they're tossing this key between them. So you gotta take them down. Then Miss Tron comes out, and you, she just fucking has this gigantic mech, and you're like, holy shit, and then you have to take that down. Um, you actually, like, saved her earlier from this dog or whatever. And she's like, this it's a funny thing where she's got like this crush on Mega Man, but she like doesn't want to admit it or whatever. And, and you see this like uh, throughout the whole game. And you know, it's just like every other one, like, you know, Marco or somebody like Mega Man's got like the harem going on. He's got Roll and he's got this girl. And then like there's girls in the game that are like, oh, Mega Man, you're a hero, whatever. And there's, there's like this little girl that you help on this uh, side quest uh, in the hospital there. Which is a great side quest. Um, you buy the machinery to like heal her legs, and then she's like walking, and she even she's like at the end, she's like, oh, you know, you, you got to take me on one of your digs one day or whatever, which is really cool. Um, so, so yeah, so you, you face Tron, and then uh, it's like kind of boss after boss after boss. You face those Serbots, then Tron, then you go into the main city there, and you get to face uh, Bon. Bon is his name, right? Bon Bon. Yeah, Bon Bon. He's like the robot. He, he never really does much, but he's their, like, other brother or whatever. Um, and Teasel, who's Tron's brother. Uh, you know, the why I'm doing the air quotes there is because it's like, I don't even know, like, I always thought that was their dad or something. Or, like, he was just the leader, the mastermind. And then, then this playthrough, it's like, oh, brother, brother, brother. And, like, Huh. Like, I never know. How did they never notice that as a kid? I don't know. I just thought it was, the, like, they were a family, you know, or whatever. So, it's, hey, whatever. It doesn't matter. Point is, this is another guy, Teasel, as well. I don't have, like, a figure of him or Bon Bon or anything. But, um... But, yeah, he, uh... He plans the next thing, and then he does this, like, dig. The whole first part was, like, they were trying to attack the city to get them to, like, tell them where the mother load is. The mother loads this treasure. They talk about it in the intro... To the game, there's this thing called the Motherload. It's this uh, massive treasure that um, 
And I still don't think we ever found out what the fuck that was, and that's part of why I'm so pissed that there wasn't a Mega Man Legend 3, because they just leave the story at a cliffhanger, but we'll get to that in Mega Man Legends 2. Um, so, there's this thing called the Mother Load, and that's the treasure they're looking for. And so, while you're on this island, they're like, oh, well, we might as well look for the treasure. But then the pirates, the Bonds, are going to look for the treasure, too. So you're trying to stop them the whole time from, like, destroying the island and, like, that kind of stuff. And what's cool is, over this first, like, those first three boss fights I just talked about, any damage that is sustained to the town is damage you'll have to pay for later with your own money so that you can do certain side quests and stuff, like, um... Like, uh, the police side quests and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Um. So that's kind of an interesting mechanic, uh, later there. And then, like, the town will get rebuilt by you paying for stuff. So that's cool. Oh. Ugh. Sorry. So, um. So, yeah, after that, like I said, you fight Teasel. He's trying to just, he's like, well, fuck it. We can't get where it is from the, the mayor. We're just going to dig down and, like, go into the dungeons ourselves or, like, dig for it or whatever. So he does that. He starts a whole project like that. You have to go and destroy that. Um, and then from there, it's like you kind of just, um, like, going through the, um, actually, no, before that, you actually have to go, so you, you get this boat fixed up, and then you go to uh this uh the sub gate the sub gate there's the sub gates and the main gates which are like the bigger dungeons like the little like um the little there's like littler dungeons that should have been talking about which are just kind of like strewn throughout the island there's like main dungeons too which also do connect back to the main dungeon but they're kind of like their own big dungeon which you'll usually have to find like uh these like keys or or something to to um to get a thing to start so you can get to the boss and then you fight a reaver bot boss. They're more based on the reaver bots and that kind of stuff, these main dungeons. So the first kind of one of those is um, out on this in this island. So you have to like sail through this lake. Uh, but of course the bonds come back and uh, they're all in it this time. Um, but it's like this giant like frog machine. Um, so there's a whole big ambush there, and then once you fight that, take that down, then you can go to the, the island with the main gate there, and then, um, you go through that, um, first dungeon there, you try to find these starter keys, these, like, little different puzzles and elements and stuff like that, uh, you find the keys, so that's, pre that's pretty cool, and then, uh, and, and, and there's lots of different unique enemies in this game, um, that continue to build over the course of the game and and sometimes they're just strewn to like one area they're like not even repeated at all in the in the first dungeon there for example there's these like hives that like make these little guys come out of them and you like i don't think you ever see that again in any of the other dungeons so that's that's really cool um there's like these running enemies which are like kind of annoying so they'll, like just bash into you that's where these those guys are first introduced um, later on, there's, like, these, the shield enemies, they'll, like, shield up, they're, the thing is, like, the better enemies, too, are worth a lot of zenny, so you want to, like, kill them, so, like, uh, for instance, this first dungeon that I'm talking about now on the lake there, that's a good grinding spot, uh, earlier in the game, or, like, kind of midway through the game, like, two-third, or, like, one-third the way through the game there, um, that's a good early grinding spot for money because of those little hive guys and, and that kind of thing. So, yeah, once you get through there, you fight a, a, a boss. I can't remember which one that is actually the, the reaver bot that's there. But you fight him. Which one is at the, the lake? I, I can't remember. Cause the one is like this big cylinder one. You fight him later. And then there's the three dog one. That's like in the second dungeon. Um... The one at the lake, I can't really remember. I don't think he's that hard. I mean, if I can't refer for him, obviously. But, yeah. So. So, there's that. So, y y yeah. So, you go there. You fight that. It's basically just that same thing um, throughout the game. You keep going to places uh, like those those uh, gates and then the sub-gates. 
And then eventually you activate the main gate. You can go in there or whatnot, um, which is cool. But in between there, there's a bunch of like memorable boss fights with the bonds. Like uh, there's this one where you're flying. You have to fly to this uh, sub gate or whatever. And um, they've got like this this cool aerial battle uh, thing. There's, there's like um, a lot of their little ships come and is the first section of it. And there's like a giant air mech uh, is the second part of it, which is pretty cool. And then there is one later, like I said, um, one called Bruno, which um, is like basically like way it's taller than any of the buildings in the town pretty much and so it just skulks around while you're and it's got all these like bomb things and this like laser and like the little energy balls it shoots at you or whatever like it's insane man and you can take all that stuff out by shooting at it a bunch of different ways which is pretty cool um so that's really neat oh yeah and you fight their ship at one point too which is really cool um you have to like you go around it kind of sonic adventure style when you go around that the ship on the 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 tornado mission or whatever, so yeah, really uh, really cool stuff there. The air battle and then the Bruno fight, um, it's all sorts of different really cool bosses in this game. The bosses are really fun to fight. They're, they're really challenging too. Most of the time, uh, they hit hard. Even when you have the flak jacket, they still can barely like um, you barely survive kind of thing. So, yeah, but, I mean, if you're good, you just dodge all of their, their fire and all of that, but, you know, I'm, I'm always somewhat good, so. I'm playing it on easy, there's a normal and a hard mode, so, I mean, like, fuck, I've never even done those. I can't imagine how hard that is, but. Yeah, so. Yeah, all the bosses are cool. The enemies are cool. Every, all the design and the aesthetic of the game is cool. So all the boss designs are super cool. All the mechs and the and even the the the, uh, the the characters are really well designed. Um, the bonds are iconic, you know, in terms of that. And then um, Mega Man looks really cool. Roll and all of them and all the townspeople and stuff. Um, the one thing I wanted to talk about was, like, the storyline with the Bonds or whatever. Um, this is kind of early, you know, characters and that kind of stuff. Um, and voice acting and all that. And the voice acting is pretty good for the time. It's not perfect. Uh, it's definitely dub level quality sometimes. Uh, you know, like, four kids dub or something. Maybe it's not that bad. It's probably a little bit better than that most of the time. But, you know, you get some odd, awkward sort of lines where it's like, okay, what are they trying to say here? Um, but, you know, that's just localization shit. But it's pretty good for the 90s. Um, th by this point, they were kind of figuring out how to dub things. But I, I like it. I like all the dialogue. There's actually, like, a lot of good emotional beats uh, with the bonds and whatnot. Um, them keeping, constantly getting killed. Not killed, but, like, uh, destroyed by this Mega Man guy. And so they, they keep, you know, pushing forward... Um, it's usually not the, the, the villains that have the story about learning to, to grow and try to become better to defeat the, 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 um, the hero. It's usually the other way around. You, your hero has to defeat the villain, um, and, and learn and grow and go overcome that. So it's really cool to see the reverse of that where the hero is actually the badass and he's the one taking down the villains all the time, but the villains have to learn and grow in order to be able to even stand a chance against the hero. That's actually really good storytelling. It's a really unique way to do that. Um, and I like the bonds. You know, there's there's a good dynamic there because it's like Teasel and, and Mega Man have like sort of this rival thing. Whereas uh, Tron and Mega Man also have that rival thing, but she's like in love with them. So it adds this like interesting dynamic there. Um, where she like you know, wants him to, to defeat him, but she doesn't want him to get hurt kind of things. So it's like, she's struggling with that back and forth, which is interesting. Um, and later on, you know, you, you keep you keep consistently seeing them, like, like not give up, but they, they're, like, down in the dumps, you know, when they're around Mega Man. And then, like, behind his back, they'll be like, we're not giving up, we're the Bonds. And they're like, you're like, fuck yeah. You know, you want him to win. You want him to, like, get somewhere. You want him to succeed. They're, 
And by the end, they kind of come around to redeem themselves. Uh, because Mega Man Juno, like, traps Mega Man in this, like, electric thing. And, uh, they come in and save the day, like, kicking him down. Because they don't want Mega Man Juno to win and to wipe out all the life. So it's like, man, you know, they're not that bad, after all. Like, you know, they're, they're kind of, they're not even, like, that bad people. They're just in it for the treasure. They're pirates, you know? That doesn't mean they're bad people. They're cool. They're great characters. They're, they're three-dimensional. Not just literally, but also, you know, emotionally and whatnot. I like it. I think they're, they're great characters, especially Bond and, and Teasel. They're, I mean, sorry, Tron and Teasel. Bond doesn't do anything. He's, he's a robot. He goes, that's what he does. That's all he does. Um, so I like them. I like the server bots. They're really cute. Um, you know, they do cute things. Um, they're kind of iconic, actually. It's fucking everyone loves the goddamn serve bots. And I know that uh, later on, like, they included Bond, not Bond, I keep saying Bond, I like, included Tron and, like, Marvel vs. Capcom and stuff, and she's one of my, like, best characters in that game, more favorite characters. So the legacy of these games kind of lived on, uh, which is cool. Uh, so, yeah, I talked about special weapons and stuff, I talked about the story, I talked about the exploration, special items... There's a, a little nice thing about this game is that the uh, you have this car and you get this walkie-talkie early in the game, which is basically like a fast travel system, like a really early proto-fast travel system. So you can go pretty much anywhere on the island that you've been that the car will go. So it's pretty it's pretty much everywhere um, by by just calling roll on this walkie-talkie and she'll just take you anywhere, which is cool. Um, so that helps cut down on a lot of the uh, backtracking and whatnot. So that that's really, really good stuff. Neato, you know. Um, oh shit. So yeah, and you know, like, and so there's a lot of these RPG elements, like I was saying earlier. And by the end of the game, it makes you feel pretty badass um, having all this health. I mean, I, I had this health from like early on in the game. So I mean, as you progress, it makes you feel stronger. And, uh, like, like you can do more and, and, uh, but, but the game is still always a fair difficulty throughout, I think, which is really nice. But, yeah, all of these elements just kind of come together. Okay, I was gonna, um, I was talking about the aesthetic, but the, uh, the graphics, um, especially are nice. The animations on the characters for the time are actually really solid. Um, and all, all of the animations, just like everything... Um, all the people and stuff, and like, just the, the world feels lively, and, and, and it's very colorful and vibrant, I like that. Um, and, and it's, it's, it's kind of, it's dense, it's like a uh, Majora's Mask sort of thing, where there's a lot to each area, and, uh, that's something that I really like about the game, is, is just that the world feels small, but it, it feels big at the, it feels big, but it, it's actually kind of small, you know, you know, compared to like modern games and stuff. But I think that it's done well because what ends up happening is it's more about how dense it is. So it feel you feel like how much content there is there uh, to this area. They've reused the same area to do a lot of things, and I think that's a more effective use of the area than having to make a million different areas, um, you know, to to do stuff. I think it's always better, not always, a lot of the times, especially in an exploration game like this, it's better when you can just do one area or start making new little areas that are part of that area. So like the city has like five different areas on it and that helps uh, to, to make the city feel small yet big because each area is kind of distinct and has their own little thing to it, like the north area has the mayor's office and the police station, and the east area has, like, all of the the hospital and all of the mini-games and stuff, and, like, the the docks and all of that. And then the, uh, the west area's got, like, the old city and all the construction and all that, and some of the later stuff in the late game. And then they have the south area, which is the, um, it's kind of the main area there, and then south of that, is the Apple Town Market, which is, like, one of the most iconic areas in the game, especially for the, the theme. Um, 
But yeah, aesthetically, the game looks really nice. Um, all the animations are really good. I guess I didn't really talk about the camera control in the game. Uh, the camera control works by you doing this, and you can't see the uh, the game there, but it tur it's, it's Spyro camera controls. We use the L1 and LR1 buttons to, uh, to shift around there. It works pretty well, other than when you're doing like those race segments, um, which not that the camera doesn't work well there, it's just like a little awkward to, to deal there. And the only thing I don't like is that it's kind of, you have to stand to, to in one place to, to shoot uh, when you're locked on. You can shoot when you're moving, um, and that's nice, um, but certain bosses you gotta lock on to kind of get the right uh, area to shoot, and so... You, you kind of have to just stand there and, and choose your moments nicely. Uh, otherwise, you're, you're going to get hit a lot, is my point. So, and I like the movement. I think it feels really nice. The jumping feels really good. And the, the rocket shoes or the jet skates or whatever make you... Uh, they feel really nice to get you around faster. And, and even the walking isn't really walking. It's like running. There's a little mechanic where you can like hold, circle while you're using a direction pad to like sneak up on people you only ever use it the one time in the whole fucking game which is really dumb um because it actually kind of screws up when you're trying to use the skates if you're holding a direction before you start using the skates it's just gonna walk so when you're doing that during that mini game it it, it can fuck you up pretty good but anyway uh not not really that big of an issue it's it's just weird that they would map that to the same thing or whatever um, if they weren't going to use it a lot, or even make a function for that at all, kind of thing. So, yeah, but the movement, even when you're just, like, you know, not doing, when you're just moving, it's it's really nice because you're running most of the time. And it's just, it, it doesn't feel, like, too fast. It, it feels the right amount of uh, kinetic there. I just like that. Uh, another thing I like is when you are when you upgrade your buster with those buster parts, the little energy ball comes becomes bigger um and like more it, it, you know, the noise becomes like everything about like the the noise becomes more powerful sounding um so like yeah it just everything about it makes you feel like you're really making progression on that when you've like upgraded your attack and your range and all that you really can see that it doesn't like most games you don't really see that but like there's there's a very visual uh, element to you upgrading that um, it just feels so good to like shoot these little energy balls uh, especially when they're maxed out because they just they're so cool it'll it'll like change color and stuff too so you know you're getting more powerful I think that's really cool um because they did that in like the old games too where you would charge up the shot and it would change color or whatever so that's neato um so yeah I like that I just like the aesthetic in general I think there's a really cute look to it but also, um, when you, like, they contrast that with, like, the robots and the reaver bots and stuff, which have, like, a sort of, well, for the reaver bots, they have, like, an ancient mechanical look to them. And then for the, uh, they're, they're futuristic, but there's also sort of something old about them, you know? Uh, maybe that's just with the lore that I'm thinking of, but, uh, maybe a little biased on that. But they feel futuristic, but also old. Um, so that, that's, that's pretty neat. But, uh, yeah, but the, the townspeople and, like, all of the characters and stuff have, like, a cute aesthetic to them, which I like a lot. And then, um, but what's cool is that, uh, so, yes, yeah, so they've, but, like, what I was saying was, uh, the, the aesthetic with, uh, the, the robots and stuff looks, like, really badass, so it's, it's a nice contrast to the uh, cutesy aesthetic of, of everything else, which is nice. So, and the world, you know, is like vibrant and looks really nice as well. Um, it's really well designed because there's so much less, not so much less, because there's less, I mean, it, it's still, it, what's, what's interesting is nowadays, there, it's, it's kind of not, it doesn't look like there's a lot, but you know, back in the day, this was a lot, like for, for a world and whatnot, um, there was a lot, here, you know, more than a lot of games. A lot of games were just designed levels, and that was kind of the way to do it. 
and even when you try to be open, uh, you'd be a game like Ocarina of Time or something, and, and, and this almost has, probably not as much as Ocarina of Time or maybe even Jorah's Mask, but it, it's on that level of like, wow, this world is dense and filled with, with stuff to do. 